Welcome to our final week of uh, digging deeper into the meaning of the Beatitudes in our journey of faith. Now, as this is the last week, uh, I must mention that we're starting a new series next week, and it will be on uh, for the Sunday preceding Christmas on a uh, day that we celebrate in our culture. Um, and uh, But on that Sunday before that we call Christmas Eve, we're going to begin a, a new series, and it's going to be what has been prompted out of the this series on the Beatitudes. Um, we're going to begin a new series on, quote, our experiences of prayer. Uh, don't know where that's going to lead us, but we're going to dig deeper together into that subject beginning next week. Now we deal with the final week of dealing with the Beatitudes. And we're going to deal this week not with a Beatitude, but rather with the, um, the postlude to the Beatitudes, if you will, in Matthew 5. And that's um, Matthew 5, 13 to 16, which just underscores why the Beatitudes are so important. Um, let's, let's look, first of all, at the Revised Standard Version. After these nine Beatitudes are articulated, the authors put it this way, <clears throat> You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall the saltness be restored? It is no longer good for anything to be thrown out and trodden under foot by men. And you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hid, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand so it gives light to all the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Indeed, a, a very clear statement that those who have the attitudes, the nine attitudes we've been talking about, uh, give light and give seasoning. To the world. The message of Eugene Peterson um, reads like this. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You're here to light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a lamp light stand. Now that I put you there on a hilltop on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. Indeed. Living the Beatitudes is bringing out divine flavors in the world and divine colors in the world. You see, the character of those who follow Jesus, according to Peterson, is to keep open house and be generous with our lives. Um... 
but now I turn to what has sort of become my favorite, um, the native version of meaning for meaning. As you walk the good road with me, you are the salt of the earth, bringing cleansing and healing to all. Salt is a good thing, but if it loses its saltiness, how will it get its flavor back? That kind of salt is of no worth, and it's thrown out. As you walk the road with me, you are a light shining in a dark world. A village bill on the hill cannot be hidden. No one hides a torch under a basket. Instead, it is lifted up high on a pole so all who are in the house can see it. In the same way, let your light shine by doing what is good and right. When others see, they will give honor to your Father, the one above us all. You see, the, the, <clears throat> the native version has a footnote inviting us to look at Second Kings. 2, 19 to 22, the spiritual leader Elisha performs a miracle by purifying the water of Jericho, which was bad. The water was made wholesome by putting salt in the water. You see, this emphasizes that the impact of salt is to cleanse and heal. The character of the faithful is the cleansing and healing element in the human community, that the human community might be whole. You see, the authors of the gospel, according to Matthew, are understanding the, uh, and underscoring the, the importance of the character of those who follow Jesus. Following Jesus is not just a matter of following commandments. It is being transformed in one's being and in surrendering to this transforming experience, the followers of Jesus become the vehicle for God's mission of love in the world. You see, the Beatitudes draw the distinction between following commandments, the rules and regs of the day, and being transformed by agape love and bringing that agape love into the world that is broken that it might be made whole. You see, following Jesus, according to the Beatitudes, is not just casually being obedient to rules and regs. It is surrendering to the divine revealed in Jesus to become the soul, cleansing and healing and the light, enabling all to see agape love, having an open house and being generous with one's life. You see, what the Beatitudes are all about is in my words saying following Jesus is a big deal. First, it's a big deal to have the attitude of serenity in the face of brokenness. Focusing on what is never broken. Agape love. Serenity is a big deal. Next, it's a big deal to be confident. With heads held high when we were at the end of our rope in mourning, as we walk our trail of tears, we discover the rope that has no end, the rope of agape love. Being confident is a big deal. It's a big deal to have the attitude of contentment. Self-acceptance 
in a world that relishes the experience of comparative living, to have the attitude of contentment, accepting ourselves. It's a big deal to have the attitude of appetite, always being hungry and thirsty for what is right in the world that is focused on what is wrong. Yeah, it's a big deal to have the attitude of care, to empathize in a world that is satisfied with sympathy and to sacrifice and serve others in a world which nourishes narcissism. To have the attitude of care is a big deal. It's a big deal to have the attitude of sincerity to earnestly wish and work for the best of the other in a world that oftentimes defines being civil by what is best for me. It's a big deal to have the attitude of respect, to respond to every person as a child of God in a world that chooses to dehumanize the other as an enemy to be subdued or, or destroyed. Yes, it's a big deal to sow the seeds of respect, even when there is seemingly no peace. The seeds of respect can be sown. Yeah, it's a big deal to have the attitude of being driven by the cause of justice, mercy, and humility in a world that often honors injustice, cruelty, and pride. Yep, it's a big deal to have the attitude of integrity, being true to oneself for the sake of the common good in a world in which what is legal is often more important than what is right. Yes, yes, see my friends, uh, the Beatitudes are a compact proclamation that following Jesus is a big deal for the world to be cleansed and healed and to see the light of agape love. And all that depends on you and me. Thanks for being a part of digging deeper into the Beatitudes. And for your thought and conversation this last week, a couple of questions. Which of these nine components of the character of those who follow Jesus is most challenging for you in your own faith journey. And secondly, in your journey of faith, of following Jesus, is it casually doing what is expected or a big deal of transforming your world with agape love? Looking forward to next week and a new series with you on prayer.